Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Knapp and Vote. This is their part number, PB1068-US3A. This is a bypass door guy, pardon me, a bypass door lock is what it is. So the PB1068 refers to the fact that it's a lock. The US3 means that it is in a brass type finish, and the A at the end of it adds the fact that regardless of how many of these that you purchase, they're all going to be keyed alike. If you have a home and you want all the doors, let's say you have four doors, four, four bypass doors, you simply want them all in the same key, you buy the 3A. If you specifically have a master bedroom, uh, and then you have three children's bedrooms, uh, you can make the master bedroom key differently by ordering the US3, which will be key differently, and then the 3A for the other three, if you like to have uh, that sort of scenario. That may not be a great example, knowing how children are, so you, <laughs> you might want them all keyed differently at that point. Um, or maybe, or maybe they're all keyed alike and only the parents have the key. Uh, anyway, regardless of how you set that up. The US3 means they're all keyed differently. When you add the A to the end of the part number, they're all keyed alike. Keep that in mind. This is just happens to be the 3A. You wouldn't really know the difference except for the key that's here. That key number that's on there is MA101 is what that is. So what is this? This is a lock that will allow you to secure from being opened uh, a set of sliding doors. The key is basically a handle is all it is and can be removed in the locked or unlocked position naturally. As you rotate that key, you affect change on the tailpiece. A couple of gears in there is all it is. You can also do this in a chrome type finish, and that would be a uh, US 26D or a 26D would be the part number. If you change the US 3 to that sort of part, difference in the part number. So when you buy this, What's in the bag? Well, the lock body, of course, the business end of the lock. A couple of keys, as discussed earlier. Key to like the key differently. You're going to get a couple of screws, which you will need to install the lock body to the door through those two countersunk holes that are there included, and then a cylinder ring you'll get. So when you drill that hole through the door, you're going to ins install that ring so that it will finish it off, as you see here. Okay simple and straightforward scenario. Okay, now let's take a look. Okay, let's now take a look at the installation instructions which are below this video and they are included uh, with the hardware. Very simple and straightforward sort of installation and go ahead and click on that link and we're going to review that now. Basically, uh, Step one is giving you the dimensional properties. The 36 inch from the floor, that's not mandatory, uh, but you're going to want to match the other locks in your house or in the uh, application. 36 is very common for a residential sort of dimension, uh, so keep that in mind, um, although I would check the others. The important part is going 5 eighths of an inch from the edge of the door to where that hole is going to start, uh, that would be important. Um, five-eighths of an inch. They want you to drill an eighth of an inch pilot hole through the door. Um, you could probably drill that through the door. Uh, may not worry too much about that, uh, except that when you come to step two and drill the one inch hole that's required, uh, you might want to have that hole started from one end and go halfway through and then from the back side and have that hole meet in the middle. Okay. You don't want to have uh, the one inch bit rupture through the back side of the door or even worse through the front side uh, because you might flare or tear wood out. That would be a problem uh, to do that. There's not a lot of um, ability to cover a mistake based on the lift that's around that trim ring. Okay. Eighth of an inch hole probably through. You're going to want to make sure that you drill as straight as possible one inch halfway through, one inch halfway through, and then you're perfect at that point. Uh, step three is going to be inserting the lock shroud, they call it, from the keyed side of the door is where that's going to go into. 
Let's take a couple of, let's take a dimensional reference point. Outside diameter, about an inch and an eighth. Overall depth, about a half of an inch. Okay, that's gonna work really well with your one inch hole. And this is a bit heavy on one inch, maybe 30 thousandths, but it has these splines that are on four sides of the unit so that when you push it in, it should stay seated properly without any need for any sort of way to keep it together. Uh, now, moving forward to step four, which is where you're going to bring the uh, lock from the back side, insert it through, mark and pre-drill your two holes. These are probably number six screws. Whatever drill bit will be required for that, you'll use. The body of the screw, not including the threads, should be the same body as what you're pre-drilling. Pre-drill a couple of holes, run, put those screws in there, do that by hand. No need to over-tighten that. Uh, after that, your installation's complete. Uh, nothing else to do. Five-eighths of an inch is really the important part. Drilling it so that you don't damage the door is crucial. Uh, you'll want to have a nice, clean hole uh, for doing that. Um, if you're going to use a spade bit, I would recommend that a model that has the cutters, and I know Bosch does, that has outside wing cutters that will score the face of the door because a typical wood door will have uh, opposing layers of plywood. Technically, it, you know, it, it, it's door veneer, but it's, it's plywood if you really think of it in just the layers. So you'll have a back or a cross banding, and as you tear through or cut through, you don't want to rip that material out and have it explode on you. Um, that's the installation instructions, and it's really that simple. Uh, eighth of an inch drill bit, one inch um, drilling bit for the body itself, whatever you'll need to pre-drill that as well. One eighth, one eighth of an inch might be too large for that. Okay, now there is also a, uh, there are several images down below this video that will allow you to review uh, what the item looks like photographically. Uh, then there are several links to sliding door hardware catalogs, bifold, bypass, pocket frame, and wall mount uh, material. Possibly most conveniently is that there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can review not only all of the nap and vote products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog uh, when it comes to sliding door hardware and uh, it's called Nap and Boat Sliding Door Hardware Catalog. The interesting thing about that catalog is that it's very easy to approach. It's very accessible. You can, it's broken up into the sections. What kind of door is it? Is it a pocket door? Is it a bifold? Is it a bypass, etc.? Flip to that section. How heavy are the doors? Okay, flip, flip to that size, <laughs> that rating. Uh, how wide is the door? And then you're gonna see not only all of the kits available to you, but the constituent parts that go along with all of those pieces. And Nap and Vote makes that published and upfront so that you can not only get an entire system out of their catalog easily, but you can, down the road, let's say you need to replace a hanger. You can go back to the catalog and get that part number for only the hanger. So that's the advantage of it. But on that page is also the core catalog, the original Nap and Vote catalog which you might know as standards and brackets and pilaster strips and clips, uh, very high quality ball bearing drawer slides and a variety of other organizational items. If you have any questions on the Nap and Vote PB 1068-US3A bypass sliding door lock, I did not mention the door thickness that this is compatible with. This is going to work from, uh, it'll, it'll work for doors up to inch and three quarter is the, is the good part about this. Uh, anything from three quarter, and it's on the installation instructions, I should have mentioned it. Anything from three quarter to inch and three quarter, this lock is going to handle. So that's important to know. You're probably not going to have a bypass door that will exceed that range. Any questions on the PB1068 US3A or any other Nap and Vote product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you very much.